Hey, Matt, have you ever thought about how your steering wheel grip reveals your personality? No, Kate, I have not thought about that uh, at all. I mean, I know that's a loaded question right there that you have to go, huh? Yeah, you uh, mentioned something about steering wheel grip to me, wanting to talk about it. And I thought maybe it was about something that you put around your steering wheel. Oh. You know, to improve your grip. I could see how you went there. Yeah, once upon a time, back when I was uh, back in high school and I had this... uh, my 1995 GMC Sonoma, Kate, I was looking at different accessories I can get, and I thought about getting one of those knobs you put on the wheel. <laughs> like people have on their tractors? Yeah, or like on a semi-truck. I think some of my drivers may have those. Okay, help me out. What's a Sonoma? Oh, it's basically an S10. Yeah, it's a pickup. Oh, it's a pickup. Small pickup. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So did you not have power steering? No, I did. I just thought it'd be kind of a cool thing to have on there. Oh, okay. Just for cool. Okay. Not Yeah, keep in mind I was like sixteen, seventeen, something like that. Right. And I thought maybe because you're sixteen, seventeen, maybe you have a POS first car. So it you know, you needed that knob okay. But just for looks. Right. So I guess in that case that would reveal that particular steering wheel grip, that literal grip might reveal something about my personality. But you're talking (laughs) about how people grip a regular steering wheel. Yeah, I, I can't go down that road, Matt. I don't have the science for that. <laughs> but I did see that there is a uh, personality expert, in quotations, online that says you can tell how a person acts just by how they grip their steering wheel. And there are several different steering wheel signs uh, or styles, which mean, do you do you typically drive... With your hands in the same position every time? No. And keep in mind, I also drive a stick shift, so that's going to okay. move my hands around a little bit more. For example, if I'm on the highway, there's a good chance I don't, don't need to be on that stick shift in my right hand as much. Okay. So are you at 10 to 2? I don't think so. No? Okay. No, I mean, unless things are more intense, if it's, uh, you know, if traffic's heavy and kind of all up around me. Right, then, right. Yeah, or if uh, it's... Uh, snowy or rainy or something like that. I, I guess more than likely I would. I adjust, agree with but. you. I think I'm only ten and two when like traffic and snow and yeah. But it's the way that we probably learned as teenagers to have your hands at ten and two. So if you do it now, that means you play by the rules, and you might also be a perfectionist. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, because sometime within the last five, ten years or something, I saw that it's really not as imperative. Like. Law enforcement doesn't care as much about you being 10 and 2, right. for example. But I know, yeah, it is, sure, the uh, the safest way to navigate your vehicle, especially if things get trying. So Okay, now, I get it. there's other people that are 8 and 4. So it's like the 10 and 2, but it's the bottom of the wheel. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's when kind of cruising driving. You're not really, like... In a hurry, you're just going, there's not a lot of traffic, you can just drive. That might that means if you normally drive at eight and four, you're a confident person who likes to take charge. Okay. Okay. I don't know how that that doesn't seem like cha- take charge. It seems like ten and two would be more of a take charge pose, but uh all right. Okay. I didn't write Confidence, these. I guess. Um <laughs> <laughs> nine and three. So far left, far right. Means you're probably an anxious person, but also very thorough. That is not that much different from 10 and 2. I'm not accusing you of writing these, by the way. Right, I should right, still right. be allowed to object to them. You, Anything I say, you are allowed to object. Absolutely. Okay, good. Yeah. I mean, that's the rule on anything, not just this. But um, what's the other thing? Uh, one hand on the bottom of the wheel, which sometimes I feel like that's appropriate. That works. You're a mm. minimalist who keeps things simple. <laughs> mm. Okay. I don't know that I'm that, but I do sometimes one hand on the bottom. Uh, one hand on the top. I do that a lot. Like when it's... You're a player. Right? I don't always have my wrist hanging over. Remember those Lay good up. old boys who'd have their wrists hanging over and they just like drive with their wrists? No? Mm. Oh, okay. Like you're, you're curling your, yeah. your hand over it? Yeah. My my dad used to drive like that, but that was because he said when he broke his wrist, it was hard for him to not have it hanging over. I don't know. But if you do one hand on the top of the wheel, you're relaxed and you like to project confidence. 
That's pretty chill, but they don't mention whether or not you're sitting in the middle of the vehicle, right? right. That's one of the one of the better poses if you got your exactly. your right hand up on the wheel and then your butt in like the middle seat. Right. Kind of leaned basically. over. Yeah, that's a that's a good look right there. Uh holding near the middle of the wheel. If it's one handed, you're a thrill seeker who likes to live life to the fullest. Mm-hmm. Two hands means you're soft spoken and try to avoid conflict. And the last one, if you've got one hand on the horn, ready to go, you're probably a bossy, bossy person, and you're very busy, but you're also reliable. So (laughs) I think I'm going to think about these things next time I'm in the car. Like, where are my hands? What does this mean? (laughs) Yeah, Waffle House is getting a new beer, and it's going to smell like bacon, Matt. Okay. Okay. Smells like bacon. Smells like bacon. Tastes like? I would think beer. Garbage. (laughs) Beer and syrup. (laughs) Pancake batter. Is that what it should be? Or waffle batter? Uh, It's called bacon and kegs. Cigarettes, maybe. (laughs) Maybe not present day Waffle House. Maybe uh, not. Maybe not. Back in the before times that were the before times before smoking was outlawed pretty much indoors everywhere, except casinos for some reason. Um... Yeah, well, I'd say Waffle House beer would taste like some cigarette butts or something. <laughs> I just think of Waffle, because Waffle House is 24 hours, right? Yes, yeah. They're open 24 hours, so that they get a lot of truckers, right? Is that why you say it smells like cigarette smoke? No, it just seems like a place that you've been to, you've been to, you remember going to Waffle House like 20 years ago, 15, 20 years ago, something like that? I. It just seems like a place that's full of ashtrays. I have knowledge of eating there. I have no memories Mm -hmm. of being there because it was never before midnight that I was at Waffle House. So I know it happened. Yeah, you never hit up uh, Waffle House the next morning? Okay. No, it was never the next morning. It was like, hmm, let's hit Waffle House on the way home. Yeah, I think I've been to, I mean, I've been to Waffle House on both both sides of a night. Yeah. I feel like more so in the morning, actually. Okay. But lots of ashtrays. I feel like Waffle House is a place I associated with ashtrays back in the day. Maybe I'm off. I don't know. Okay. I don't but. remember. So <laughs> there could have been ashtrays. Yeah. There's a good five-year period of Kate's life where she has no me- memories of anything. I mean, I know we went there. <laughs> yeah. I know. Are you sure it wasn't Denny's? <laughs> no, I'm sure. We didn't have a Denny's near us. Yeah. It was okay. Waffle House. So does, is Waffle House serving this Waffle House branded beer? Well, that's what I want to know. My guess is no. But. My guess is no, you're right, because Waffle House doesn't serve Bloody Marys. So Or any liquor, yeah. Yeah. that's. My, I mean, who? if you're going to be a breakfast joint, I think you should be able to sell booze for mimosas and Bloody Marys. I know not everybody does those breakfast cocktails, but... Yeah, you're, I mean, well, you could have like Bailey's and coffee or just an Irish coffee or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. See, Matt gets it. You could just have straight tequila or. Uh... Right. What do they call? What's t- tequila and OJ? Oh, I don't know that name. Well, vodka and OJ is. Tequila Sunrise. That's with a little bit of grenadine, right? So that you got the, the pink sunrise? in there. Tequila oh, Sunrise. Okay. That makes sense. But I was thinking there was a name for just tequila and orange juice. Like, not the screwdriver. It's the jackhammer. No, I don't know. Looking it up now. Okay. Okay. Googly, googly, googly. Tequila OJ. Uh, Tequila Sunrise, the first thing that pops up here. Okay. Uh, Tequila screwdriver. Oh. (laughs) Here I was thinking it was going to be, you know, clever. I like that. Tequila screwdriver. Well, I mentioned once before about the Bloody Maria, which is a Bloody Mary with just uh, tequila instead, and I think it's really good. I still have yet to try that. I want to try that. Yeah, try it. Because I'm not a let's take tequila shots as much as I'm like, I'll drink a margarita, sure. Margarita for breakfast does not sound good. No, you're correct. Mm. But like tequila shots never sounds good. But I could do a lot of margaritas. Yeah, see, I disagree. I think tequila is a pretty, and I think that's actually a minority opinion that tequila is pretty good straight. But, but you like tequila? Yeah, tequila. I'm getting thirsty now talking about it. 
tequila is pretty good. My mouth puckered a little bit when I think about the salt on the margarita. I'm like, yes, on the rocks, lots of salt. And go ahead, bring me a second one. It, w- it wasn't the sour nature of the margarita that made your lips pucker? Oh, I don't know. I think about how I, uh, I'll i drink most of a margarita. I usually order two <laughs> at a time. Double fist in. <laughs> two at a time. So when you drink most of one, you can pour the other one in uh-huh. and then just keep on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> keep licking the salt. Reminded me of this time when I was uh, when I was working in Junction City. We, uh, a couple of us had remotes on two different radio stations, remote broadcasts, and then we hit up El Tapatio, I believe is the name of the Mexican joint, and they had like dollar, dollar margaritas, Mm. and uh, we went there, and uh, Randy, our engineer, joined us also, and then we went back to the station afterward, and this is a Saturday, yeah, and I, I fell asleep on the couch for like five hours. Somebody came in. Did a show, left, and then I woke up <laughs> and, and felt fantastic. And I felt, felt great. Felt, felt very good about my decision. Well, yeah. yeah. Very yeah. smart. Very hey, responsible. Hey, man, you get, that, you get that big remote pay, big remote broadcast pay, and then dollar margaritas? Yeah. You know, enough to get nearly a whole night of sleep in? I mean, come on. Oh, man. Re- re- not too many better ways to spend a Saturday. Nope. I probably wouldn't be able to pull that off now. I was going to say, could you do that now? I don't think I could do that now. I think if I didn't have anything to do on the Sunday. Right. I I might be able to pull it off. But back in the day when you could pull that off and then still be productive the next day. I miss that part. Because I take alcohol out of the picture. If I have a crappy night's sleep, I feel like I'm worthless the next day with zero (laughs) alcohol involved. So you throw in alcohol and then you throw in crappy sleep because I don't sleep like I used to with booze. And then it's just like, I'm just going to be on the couch all day. Bring me a cheeseburger and a Dr. Pepper and I'll be okay. But That sounds pretty good. I don't think my body can handle it. Like, I don't know if I could be productive for 48 hours now. <laughs> yeah, I haven't challenged myself in a long time. I feel like I need to, uh, need to challenge myself, you know, again, before I were to rule out my ability to do it. I think I think that's right. I think I would be white pretty good. I've always been pretty good at being able to, and I still can, uh, chug water really good. Oh. Um, but after be- getting that smashed or whatever. Oh, it's the worst. After getting so drunk that uh, I don't even remember what the inside of a Waffle House looks like, Kate. Right? Um, <laughs> I mean, I remember what it looks like. I just don't remember conversations or if the food tasted like an ashtray. I know it was there. Probably a good time. No, the food only tastes like an ashtray because the restaurant itself was like a literal trash uh, ashtray back in the day. Back you know? in the day. I'm sure it's a lovely place now. Back in my day, you could smoke at the Waffle House. Oh, man. I mean, it was a big deal. I lived on a smoking floor in college. It was just, things were different. Yeah, you'd mentioned that before. It's very bizarre to me. With yeah. nuns. With nuns who'd come and smoke with us. And I say us. I... Out of four years of college, I think I smoked three cigarettes. And let's say like three times and not three full cigarettes. So just hung out with the smokers. I stand. Did you inhale, Kate? Oh, I'm sure. But let's just say I stand by my smokers were more fun. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I don't know if that's the message we need to be getting no, out there. No, but never mind. Back then they were more fun. Today never they're mind. kind of a buzzkill. Back then. Now they are stinky friends. Today they are shamed. Right, because I don't even think, I'm I'm going through my list of who I was always with that smoked. They don't smoke anymore, so. And they're no longer fun. So there you go, kids. And they're dead because they died. So, I'm just kidding. (laughs) They smoked in college, now they're dead. Don't do it, boys and girls. So I don't know what point my children have become really judgy about smokers because We'll be walking somewhere and someone's outside smoking before they go into a building. And my girls are so yeah. loud. They're like, oh, he's smoking. I'm like, shush up. Gosh, that's great. Don't say anything. Yeah, I feel like I can smell a cigarette a mile away. I'm like, right. oh, someone's smoking. It smells kind of good. <laughs> but that's interesting that they're smoking. Okay. Yeah, because you used to smoke. Uh, Yes, unfortunately. Yeah. 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 
I don't want to talk about it. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I don't yeah. want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> My bad. Shut up. Shut up. Moving on. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, big big mistake. Big waste of uh, of money and life, for sure. And it's interesting, too. You know, it could be weather that you would never want to go out in. Do pretty much anything, but you're out of smokes. Okay, let's brave the elements. <laughs> Must go chemically addicted. Uh, Can go days without food. But, uh, okay, it's been half an hour. No, for somebody who doesn't want to talk shakes. about it. They're talking about it a Shaking. lot. And I have lots of questions, but you say you don't want to talk about it. So I'm not going to talk about it. I'll just let you talk about it. Okay. Okay. You don't want to talk about it. Yeah, I, yeah, I do feel <laughs> weird talking about it. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. Like ashamed or like embarrassed or if you talk about it too much, you're going to be like, yep, want one. Let's do it. Well, yeah. And I'm, I, I also am curious. We'll keep this part for the podcast at least. Okay. Um, If that's a bad thing to be talking about for potential kids listening or not. Mm. You know. Yeah, I had three total cigarettes in college, but Matt used to be a filthy smoker, and now look at you, big radio star. <laughs> I think you added extra words in there, but <laughs> I, okay. my only thought, like, I forgot that you were a smoker, so when I feel like you get all like the, that's weird, I can't believe you lived in a place where you smoked, I'm like, yeah, but you smoked. Not that you would ever live there, so it was just like, oh, yeah, you smoked. So no, it's weird to be in a place where there are other people living, and uh, smoking is allowed. That is the weird part. Okay, not that smokers existed at all. <laughs> it's like you can't go outside <gasps> and smoke. Uh, no, feel free to fill all of our lungs with smoke. Fire escapes and uh, yeah. a balcony. Yeah. Um. So can I ask, what did you do with the money that you saved after you quit smoking? Uh, I think I got HBO or something. One of the times I quit, okay. I, I quit a couple times. Okay. Uh, in college, yeah, in my senior year, I was like, "What am I doing?" Because that was basically one of those deals where, uh, started smoking because uh, it was available and I was drunk, you know, from other people. Mm-hmm. And then it was like, "Oh man, I feel bad because I'm always bumming cigarettes off people. I guess I'll just go ahead and buy my own pack." And then next thing you know, you smoke it sober, and then that was it for me. Really? For a while, for a while, and then my senior year. I was like, this is stupid. I need to quit this. So there was only like a year in college. And then I was like, what can I do? And I actually did use that as motivation to be like, hey, if I quit smoking, then I could watch The Sopranos every weekend. (laughs) Right? Just something. Right. No, it makes sense. Yeah. It's not like I stopped doing something and I magically am like, oh, I've got this extra money. Let me go spend it. Sometimes you can just put it in the bank. Right. You know? Right. Like no, my I drinking money from this past uh, from the past six months has uh, mostly gone into the bank, and in fact, by not drinking, there's no drinking inspired purchases happening. So, <laughs> no drunken Amazon clicks. Well, I mean, I don't use Amazon even oh, if God. I'm drunk, but uh, right, no drunken purchases from like B and H photo of electronics or whatever. Okay. Yeah. I hear you. I'm not, try- I'm not trying to Amazon shame. It just it just comes out. A side effect. It's just it's just the way you are. It's fine. I don't do Amazon, even if I was drunk. <laughs> you were the one that brought up Amazon. I didn't go out of my way to say it. I just wanted to clarify for the record. I know. I was just trying to go through what I usually get click happy on when I've had a few too many. But I haven't done that in a while. Yeah, have you had any? I haven't. I haven't done that in a while. What's holding you back, Kate? I haven't been drinking as much, Matt. I no, Yeah, that is right. You did say you managed to make a bottle of wine last three total drinking sessions. That was pretty I impressive. Know. And last night, I really wanted a glass, but I didn't want to open a bottle for just a glass because I was looking at the rest of the week going, okay, am I going to drink the rest of these nights? I don't know, but I don't want to pretend that I will. And if it's there, I will. So... Instead of having a glass of wine last night, I had uh, a hot chocolate. So, oh, and I would have tasty. added some Bailey's, but I didn't have any. <laughs> yeah, here's something interesting. When I tapered off my well, when I quit drinking, 
I was like, I need to have some kind of beverage at night, and water's not going to cut it, you know. And so I Wait a ordered a bunch of different. You need to have a night night drink. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I suppose so. I need to have some sort of night night drink. <laughs> I suppose so. <laughs> and then as time's gone by, um, you know, I would just dilute the herbal tea as the night went on. Just you know, keep adding hot water to that, right? Or whatever. And now, lately, I haven't even been bothering with it. Water's been just fine. Just fine. So, yeah, basically use the herbal tea as a uh, a way off there. And then, yeah, now I'm I'm committed pretty much to never being a regular drinker again, except, like, just special occasions. You think so? Hangouts. Yeah. Not by myself. Yeah. Have you had any lately? Are you still? Yes, I have. Actually, I went six months without yeah? a drink. Yeah. And then uh, had a uh, friend in town, and I was like, oh, this is a good opportunity if he wants to have drinks, to uh, have some drinks. How'd it go? Uh, it went well. I mean, is it like one of those things that when you taste it, you're like, I didn't, I don't miss this. Or it was like, oh, sweet nectar of the gods. I miss you. <laughs> uh, it tasted good. Yeah. I did not have a sweet nectar of gods moment. Okay. But, uh, it was... Uh, it was tasty, and it was definitely one of those things where it's like, oh, yeah, I don't know how how I could put down more than, you know, four of these, you know, in, in a given night or something, you know. I'm, I'm assuming beer? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So what was your first beer? It was uh, Boulevard's The Calling IPA. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Which is uh, their, it's part of their Smokestack series, which their Smokestack series are almost like wine strength. Oh, I think the calling's on the lower end of it, though, at like 8.5%, okay. something like that. But some of those Smokestack series alcohols go up to like 12 or 13%. Yikes. Those beers. Yeah, so you got to be careful. Get a little bit dangerous. And you felt fine the next day? I could tell that I had drinks the night before. Yeah. Yeah, but then I was able to, once again, uh, throw a bunch of water on there and put that fire out pretty quickly. There you go. So. But your body wasn't like, wait, we're a well-oiled machine. What did you do? No, yeah, I could definitely, there were some, there were some side effects, but it wasn't like a hangover. You okay, know what I mean? Okay. It would be the same thing as if I were to just have like chicken fried steak or something, <laughs> or something some night. Uh, food this coma? Is my, my, my gut's like typically like, usually you're just throwing a bunch of like vegetables in here and some eggs. And then what's with this? What's this? What is this? What have you put in here? What is this? Okay. And, uh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So have you started I, counting again? Or no, are you, okay. no. Okay. I'm, I'm not trying to achieve a, a giant streak again. I think six months was pretty good. I think it's great. I think well done. And then now just every once in a while, um, socially. Well done. It'll be a, thanks, Kate. Yeah. I was pretty pleased with how it went. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, and it really, more than anything, it really just helped reset the relationship with it, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Make it less of an idle thing. You know, it's like, oh, I'm idle. Should have a drink. Exactly. Or, and I struggle with that. Like, I'm really stressed and I want to put my shoulders down. I should have a drink. And I have, I've struggled with that. Like, I need to find something else to put my shoulders down. So. Yeah, I never really found it a, a helpful stress reliever, I guess. No? No, not really. And I guess that's a probably healthy. Yeah, that's um, really good. I think it was just something like, oh, I like drinking. Yes. <laughs> I think, that was, I think yes. that was it. But never like, oh, my God, I need a drink. Like, uh, and apparently when I used to need a drink, I was already drunk, according to that impersonation of myself. But, uh, <laughs> uh, oh, my God, yeah, all right. Give me another one. Yeah. yeah. Fill it up again. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of dumb decisions you can make uh, while drinking. Lots. So. Lots. Like continuing, like like having another drink. Mm-hmm. 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 Especially when, like, you know, you, this it's the, the, the line in the sand. I'm doing really good right now. If I have that next drink, I am not going to be doing good anymore. But I'm still kind of thirsty, so maybe I'll have another one. Right. And uh, something has lowered my inhibitions right now. I'm not sure what it is. I guess I'll go ahead and have another drink. Instant regret. Yeah. Well, maybe not instant. I was going to say, sometimes, not always. Not always. Instant regret 10 hours later. Kind of like when you're 
you're at a restaurant before times and (laughs) you're like, this food is so good. But if I eat another bite, I'm going to be miserable. Like right now I'm good. But if I (laughs) go one more bite, I definitely will be miserable. And it's like, Mm -hmm. okay, now I'm miserable. Why did I do that? Mm. Yeah, those emotions tell you what. Tell you what, Matt. Living living in the moment. Inst- instant gratification, I think, is what all these things uh, are. Yeah. Smoking, drinking, eating, especially when you're eating highly uh, uh, savory or sweet or whatever food items. Yeah. I always, I never could understand. I used to be such a good water drinker, and I could drink so many beers in a night and it was impossible to drink any water the next day. I was like, no, I can't. I can't drink anything. I can't. It's like, if you would just drink water, you will not be miserable. Nope. Right. Or if you just done every other water with your drinks. Exactly. Exactly. Nope. It's a good way to pace yourself also. Right. You know. Right. Be responsible. Make good choices. Correct. I feel like that's correct. Yes. Yes. It's a pandemic, and my first world problems are, what refrigerator do I get? (laughs) Like, I'm building a house, and it's so stressful, and it's, it is very stressful in my life, but I could see how that Sally listener is like, get over yourself, pick a fridge, move on. Nah, people like it. So, I think I get in my own head. Yes. So. Precisely. I'm trying not to get in my head. You can trust me on some of this stuff, Kate. I Any other day, I would have said, yes, Matt, I can trust you. <laughs> After yesterday's conversations, though, about descriptions of podcasts, uh, <laughs> one of my good friends oh. sent me a text when she got the podcast, and she was like, hope today's not the day your mother-in-law decides to listen. I'm like, right. <laughs> Thanks. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you don't get the podcast, you should look up podcasts and look up the Matt and Kate podcast to to see how Matt describes our podcast, which I give him so much credit because he's so witty and he can think of these really great questions to bring the listener in. This is why you want to listen to this podcast. And yesterday, no exception, just a little like, oh my gosh, Matt, I can't believe. But he went there because we went there. So you have to go there. And I get it. I get it, Matt. I'm just dead. I'm dying. Thanks, Kate. So wherever you find your podcasts, look up Matt and Kate. There you go. There you go. <laughs> All right, Kate. Hey, Matt. You know, I feel like you've told me before, like, do people really care about my my home building experience and shopping for appliances <laughs> and all this stuff? And I was like, yes, Kate. This- I think I said, Matt, people don't care. And you say, yes, Kate, they do. <laughs> right. I go, that kind of content is killer. Uh, second only to... Uh, software update uh, oh, right, content. Right. We're talking about updating software for emoji. I mean, emoji are so relatable. So uh, we got this note about the appliances. Because you had mentioned yeah. that you're going to buy appliances all from the same brand so yes. that the stainless steel or whatever color you decide matches. Right. And just the general styling matches. Right. Okay. So... Here's the note here. We did the same thing, buying all the same brand of appliances when we redid our kitchen. Our microwave recently fried, and we went and got another by a different brand. Now I notice that the color of the light on the clock is different than the color of the clock light on my stove. Kind of drives me nuts. I understand where you're coming from. Winking face emoji. Winking face emoji. Which, Mm -hmm. now I wouldn't have thought twice about this. Like the color of the clock bothers you. That's weird. But if your clock, if your microwave is above your stove, so there's clock and then clock, unless you're Matt Stooks, who doesn't have clocks uh, or disables his clock on both. That's right. Disable those clocks. Right. Right. Um, Then you don't notice. But if you are normal and have your clocks working, (laughs) just kidding, Matt. But I could, I wasn't (laughs) picturing like... If your microwave was way over here across your kitchen and your stove was right here, how would that bother you? But if your microwave is right above your clock or your stove, yeah, Mm -hmm. the clocks could drive you crazy. So at first I didn't understand. And now I'm like, oh, yeah, I I get it. Well, that's definitely a reason to disable at least one of those clocks because it's very (laughs) difficult to sync the clocks up, you know, unless it's connected to the Internet, which most people's stoves and microwaves are not. 
you know, so one's going to hit, you know, three o'clock a minute before the other one's going to hit, you know? Yeah. So my, my clock in my stove and my microwave both run on Kate time. Okay. So they are two different times than the clocks in the rest of the house. You have them run fast on you? I have the, the microwave and the stove. They are five minutes fast. And every other clock in the house is right, except for the except for my alarm clock. My alarm clock is eight minutes fast. Okay. You do this to fool yourself because if you're in yes. the kitchen, the time needs to... Yep. We got to go, go, go. Get out the door. Come on. Gotcha. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I used to do that hack where I had like my clock, my bedroom clock set five to 10 minutes ahead. And then eventually mm-hmm. I was like, okay, why don't I just deal with reality? Oh, where's <laughs> the fun in that? Find the appropriate time to get up and get moving. Uh, you know, dealing with reality. Getting old, Kate. I'd rather not, Matt. I'd rather not. Getting old I... and acknowledging reality. Man, it's tough. <laughs> 